three kilometers walk from this end to the other end. This is the entry, this is the beginning. We call it upper gate. You see the groups and the ruins. The small theater uh, from first century AD on your left, Roman, it was designed as a parliament building. Uh, we call it council chamber, council chamber, parliament house. We have the ancient city, Ephesus. We are going to visit the city, the Roman city. Mainly the remains are from the 1st and 2nd century AD. Five major earthquakes in this region in the history destroyed Ephesus. That was in the year 280. It was a Greek city, but under the administration of the Roman Empire, started in the 2nd century BC, it's been converted to a Roman city because the Romans they had their own public buildings and different architecture and further developed more far advanced So, here I show you a game board. This is one of the popular games being played in the Roman time. Very similar to the backgammon. Yes. Backgammon is also one of the oldest games, very popular game in the Orient. Almost for 3,000 years it's been played in the Oops. Orient countries. So this is actually a different version of that game, backgammon game. This is a proper one, but simply they carved on the marble floors in the city, many places you can see this same board to play. So in their free times they used to play such games then. between the sitting area and the stage house that was covered. It was not open air. This little orchestra you see down there, it was for the musicians during the concerts. That's the stage. Generally, all the speakers, they had all their speech. Now we are standing in front of the altar of Artemis and the Roman emperors. Two altars being here at that place so called Temenos with columns around it you can see some of them that square piece of land being the holy place the sacred area for the mother goddess Artemis inside of the city so this is the port of Ephesus down here where you see this little bay dried area that was the port the commercial port of Ephesus like a river that goes to the sea because when the whole bay that was silted up especially in the Roman time the first and second century AD that was right at that port of Ephesus that started to close also the entrance into the port from the sea the Roman they were actually very advanced in engineering and also with their architecture they managed to build an artificial channel to the sea bringing the seawater back into the bay of Ephesus so now we are in the Domitian square half excavated the other half is at the back still under the sea under the down. At that square we had this big temple built in the first century AD for Domitio. But when Christianity became the official state religion, the temple being destroyed, but the name which was given to the fountain because it was useful construction. They didn't destroy the fountain, but they changed the name of it. Domitian being actually changed to Polio, one of the Roman emperors then in the 4th century. At that time, Polio fountain is being one of the main fountains of this square. 
They've been actually financed by these wealthy people in the city. Of course, they were using these places for the honoring of their emperors, same time, giving the, the names of the emperors to these places. That's been called the Trajan Fountain. Trajan, the Roman emperor, he was born in Cordoba near to Sevilla one of the two Spanish origin emperors, same like Hadrian after him, he was the emperor. And in the center of this monumental construction, in a big niche, there was this statue of Trajan, the Roman emperor Trajan, about four meters high marble statue. Decorations of the floors in the Roman time, all the mosaics, marble stones being cut in squares, all original colors, they are not dyed, mainly black, white and terracotta colors being used, beautiful decorations on the floor in front of the shops, there were 12 shops next to each other, the last one at the end that was the taberna, so called center. restaurant, oh. at that time to eat and drink, and all the others, they were actually shoemakers, some textile shops selling silk materials and maybe pottery, some jewelers. In front of the Hadrian Temple, that temple has been reconstructed, of course, but a beautiful architectural example of the Roman time with an Assyrian influence, very oriental influence, you can see on the decorations. Tike type at the keystone, at the on top of this arch is the protection goddess of city Ephesus. Same time, she was the goddess of fortune. Goddess of fortune, TK, right at the back. She has been always interpreted in different ways. Sometimes they say she must be Medusa, but she's not. Medusa is supposed to be only the head with the snake hair, because she has like a snake hair. Has been told Medusa. We are not quite sure about it. Can be Flora. Flora is the goddess of plants, trees, and flowers. And in front of the seats, we have a gathering for the running water. Here they use this water with their sponge to so clean them themselves. All these sponges, they had a wooden handle. They were all hanging inside of this pool in the center. That was open air to collect rainwater in this pool. At the same time, they had actually air ventilation. No privacy, you can see, no separations. They were sitting next to each other. Probably, yeah, probably they were also talking and discussing different things here. In this yeah, what oh, the women? Woman, you didn't see very much in the public places. In the, on the streets. In the center of the city, that is a crossroad of the main streets, Marble Street going to the Great Theater, the Embelos, the Kuret Street up to Acropolis. This is the entrance into the residential area of the rich people. And here we have actually at that crossroad the library, Kelsos Clemenaos, who was actually the governor, the proconsul of Province Asia in the Roman time. And he is being buried with the permission of the parliament members here in the city. And at that place, burial place of Kelsos, his son Aquila, who became the next governor of the province, been 
constructed that library, three floor library. From outside, it looks two floor. One of the best reconstruction uh, examples of Asia Minor. It's been done in eight years, between 1971 and 78, by the Austrian archaeologists. In original size, 74% original pieces. It had 14,000 scrolls in the Roman time inside of this library as documents, important documents. After Alexandria in Egypt and Pergamon in Asia Minor, Ephesus Library was the third biggest library with the collection of these documents inside. Were many of Next. them saved? At, at no, no, no. We don't, we don't have any remains of these scrolls because that's been destroyed in the earthquake. Plus, after that, they got the barbarian occupation from mm -hmm. northern Is Balkans. The first advert in the history being used in Ephesus to show the way to the brothel of the city. Footprints, this left footprint is meaning you have to go to the left hand side, walk up to the crossroad there. There is a beautiful lady waiting for the love. It's been wrongly named as the brothel of the city. <laughs> but spring water on the hills yeah and everywhere you can see the ah. nomadic house the gods nomadic. and ships from nomads they build the house you can see the piece of the ruins there and they, next to that the animals stay there
they eat the leaves of these mulberry trees and Turkey is the third biggest natural silk producer in the world after China and India Turkey has got all these productions which has been used in the Ottoman time